Welcome to my channel, Gadgets for Gentlemen. In today's video, I want to present to you this unboxing. I received a parcel all the way from Russia. It took several weeks to arrive here in the Netherlands. And I'm very excited to unbox this watch for you and give you my first impressions. If you have been watching my videos on this channel, then uh, you might be familiar with this uh, particular watch since I have owned this watch previously. Uh, a slightly different watch that is. For today's video, I'm wearing this beautiful Seiko Alpinist and I wear it on this brown NATO strap. So let's proceed by unboxing. I want to point out here, you can see some information in Russian, which has to do with uh, the customs. So let's unbox this one. We might as well use a knife. Let's see, that's better. Before we proceed, I like to point out these stamps, which can be found on the parcel. I think that is pretty cool. Very good, some protection foam. So here we have the Vostok. This is a Russian brand. The watch that we will look at today was made for the Russian Navy. So there we go. We have some uh, paperwork. So there we have it. The watch again in some nice foam. Let's take it out going to get rid of this uh, box I don't think we need it for this uh, video anymore so there we have it the watch and some foam as you can see the watch is already moving see there's some there's a film of uh, plastic on the acrylic crystal and there is a bunch of plastic around this bracelet so that's the clasp and as you can see it's real dangerous you will easily you would um, easily chip your nail <laughs> when you try to open this clasp. So a really horrible clasp. Really horrible bracelet. But it has that interesting logo. Let's open it. So very shiny, horrible bracelet, but a beautiful signed case back. A 
let's have a look at that dial so what we have here is the Vostok Amphibia and this uh, particular dial uh, version is called the Scuba Dude because if we bring it closer we can see that um, Scuba Diver and I think that looks very pretty as you can see the blue has a very nice kind of vintage and sunburst effect we can see some applied markers here at, at the um, every hour position applied loom dots interesting hands also with applied loom and we have the very beautiful second hand with that big loom dot as you can see this uh, particular model has a date window at the three o'clock position with a white inlay so i brought the vostok a bit closer to the camera and i want to run over some uh, basics of this watch uh, first of all i want to mention that i think the original bracelet is uh, straight horrible don't get me wrong um, i really love this watch and if you keep watching then um, you'll see that i'm very positive about this watch but the bracelet is in my opinion just um, very ugly so first i'm going to get rid of the bracelet so one more look at the bracelet before we let it go as you can see here the bracelet is easy to adjust with these arrows we have hollow end links i think um, the nasty part of this bracelet is the fact that it will pull your hairs your skin and also the the clasp is just uh, very difficult to operate it definitely uh, uh, might damage your nails and your skin um, great thing about this uh, buckle is there is micro adjustments so if you want to uh, keep this uh, bracelet then it should be fairly easy to find uh, a comfortable fit and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it on this um, rubber strap I bought this particular strap uh, at this company called watch gecko I think they're based in England and they have great uh, customer service and nice products so I'm gonna throw this on the uh, Vostok and get back to you so there we have it I've put the Vostok on this um, rubber strap and I think that looks much better so now I want to proceed with um, this little unboxing video and discuss a few features about this uh, Vostok Amphibia so now we get started I'd like to point out some dimensions we have a lock width which is this distance of 18 millimeters so it should be fairly easy to find um, aftermarket straps for example this, um, this interesting rubber strap and then you should look for straps uh, with a width of 18 millimeters so for example this um, NATO strap also uh, has a width of 18 millimeters and here I have another uh, rubber strap also with a size of 18 millimeters this, this width I think there's also uh, metal straps on the market for example beautiful mesh or uh, Milanese uh, metal straps that you can uh, fit in here now let's go over the case diameter what I mean by that is uh, this distance the diameter of this uh, watch is 40 millimeters excluding that crown so that's a very uh, 
uh, a size that I think will suit uh, everyone. Uh, when we have a look at the lock to lock distance, and what I mean by that is the distance from this part all the way to the other side, uh, that size is 46 millimeters. And finally, if we have a look at the thickness of the watch, so by that I mean from the top of the crystal all the way to the um, case back. We're dealing here with 14.4 millimeters. So I would consider this to be quite a chunky or a thick watch. Uh, do pay that in mind if you want to um, uh, go for uh, this watch. Uh, by comparison, uh, for example, I want to point out that the watch I'm wearing today, which is the uh, Seiko Alpinist, has a thickness of only 12 millimeters. And I think that has uh, partly to do with that uh, crystal. As we can see here with the Seiko, this is quite a flat uh, sapphire crystal. And when we look at the uh, Vostok, we can easily see that the crystal is very uh, high. I try to have you see it here in this uh, video. What I mean by that is it's domed, it's, uh, the crystal has a curve to it. So that adds uh, maybe, I think at least a millimeter of that thickness. So the thickness is not all due to the uh, case and the bezel, but also largely due to that um, domed crystal. So the Vostok Amphibia, it was designed for the uh, Russian Navy. Uh, in the era of the Cold War and it features an in-house automatic movement that is very robust. It was made for the uh, Navy so uh, it had uh, military uh, specifications. Uh, it's 200 meters water resistant. It has a bi-directional bezel that is um, not very smooth or easy to operate. As you can see here, the bezel has no clicks. And what I heard is the bezel is not uh, stainless steel, but it is um, brass. And there is a, a layer of uh, chrome. So non stainless steel bezel. And I think the, the bezel is um, one of the big flaws together with the bracelet on this watch. Um, I previously owned the Vostok Amphibia and uh, it was, I easily, you know, changed uh, the bezel uh, unintentionally. So if I were to time uh, a certain thing, then I might bump into something and then the bezel would move. With all due respect, I must say this bezel feels much stiffer than the bezel uh, that I'm used to uh, on my previous Vostok. But uh, same thing applies. So bezels are, you can see in a lot of dive watches and they're used uh, uh, to, to time. And I think uh, a bezel should be uh, having very firm clicks it should be easy to operate, but it should not be easy to, um, to mess up your timing. So as I mentioned earlier, we have an acrylic crystal with a big dome. So the acrylic crystal uh, easily uh, is prone for scratches. But then also there's methods to uh, buff out scratches on this acrylic crystal. The in-house automatic movement, it allows for hand winding. So let's have a look at the crown here at the three o'clock position. As you can see here, the crown is not signed, but it has these very nice um, chips here on the side, which makes, and, and it's quite large. 
so that's easy to uh, operate. There's no crown protection here. Uh, unlike uh, some other Vastak Amphibia uh, models. So let's uh, unscrew the crown. So the crown is screw, screwed down. And when you see this, we can see that the crown is uh, wobbly. What I mean by that is you can see we can move this part of the crown. And that is uh, not an error or um, bad uh, manufacturing. It is a um, design uh, that was made to protect the movement. So when the crown is um, unscrewed and you would bang against something, then the stem of the movement will not uh, damage. So let's have a closer look. As you can see here, in the neutral position, if we move the crown upwards, we can wind the movement. And I bring it closer to my uh, microphone, so you'll be able to hear that movement. So that's the sound of uh, the hand winding here and that sounds great. Now one of the drawbacks of this movement I think is the lack of quick set. So one of the um, negative things about the movement is there is no way to quick set the date. So let's set the time. So. When I move the hours, so it's fairly easy, as you can see, to set the time, and the day just jumped a few minutes before midnight, which is no not a big thing, but um, there's no way to uh, change the date uh, quickly. Unlike, for example, my uh, Seiko Alpinist, uh, in which the crown has uh, a few positions, the neutral position, a position to set a date, and a position to set a time. While this uh, crown only has a neutral position for hand winding, and one to set a time. So there is a way to uh, change the date in a faster way. So now we see that the hour hand is at the 12 o'clock. When we proceed the time to about 4 a.m. Bear with me. So let's take 4 a.m. And then we move back to 8 p.m. As you can see here. I'm moving back to about... 8 p.m. and then proceed to midnight we can see the date just jumped to the 27th so if you want to save some time setting the date then what you can do is after the date changes you go a few hours ahead to for example 4 a.m. and then head back to 8 p.m. And then you can go back to midnight. And that's a slightly faster way to change the date. And I do want to say I don't think that's a very easy option. I would prefer if the movement had a quick set way of setting the time. But um, yeah, sometimes you cannot have it all. So we have an automatic uh, movement. Uh, that is charged either by uh, just, as you can see here, by um, movements of your wrists, because inside, unfortunately, we cannot see it. But there's a rotor that will charge the movement when you when you shake it, and also we can hear the rotor. 
if I put it next to my microphone. So when you hear that, the rotor is spinning, charging the movement. And as I showed you earlier there, we can manually wind the movement to charge it. Um, the watch or the movement does not allow for hacking. So what I mean by hacking is when I unscrew the crown, the uh, movement will not stop running. So for example, here with the Seiko Alpinist, when I unscrew the crown, and then when I uh, put the uh, crown in the second position, pay attention to the second hand. See, the crown is in the second position, and now the second hand will stop moving. And then when I press in the crown, pay attention to the uh, second hand, the watch stops, uh, starts moving again. So that is called uh, hacking. And uh, when will you use hacking? I think I will use hacking if I want to set the time uh, very uh, precisely, uh, according to, for example, my iPhone. And um, this uh, Vostok does not feature hacking. So that's uh, one very tiny uh, negative point. So all in all, I think this is a beautiful watch. And before this uh, watch arrived, I went on eBay and I bought myself this Pepsi bezel. And uh, what I plan to do is to, to take off the um, original uh, bezel, this one, and replace it uh, with this uh, so-called Pepsi bezel. And as you can see here, I think the bezel looks very gorgeous. So I will replace the bezel uh, soon. And um, if you follow my channel, then you will see the end result. So that's the Vostok Amphibia Scuba Dude. This case is uh, the 420. Uh, with a lock width of 18 millimeters. Uh, there's a bunch of other cases, but I really like the design of this one. Also the dial, uh, you can find in a whole uh, array of different uh, choices. There's a black dial, there's a dial with a, with a ship, there's a dial with a tank, and all sorts of uh, different dials. I think this dial is just really pretty because of that faded blue and uh, the sunburst effect of it. I really like how that green loom dots play with that blue and that red second hand. I think by far this is the most prettiest uh, Vostok dial. I also like the fact there is no numbers on the dial. I'm going to throw this on the wrist so here I just threw it on my wrist. As you know, I have um, small wrists, only 6.3 inches. And I think the watch wears very comfortable. As you can see here, it is uh, quite thick, but that also is a, a bit of the charm of this watch. As you can see, it's a very beautiful piece. It's very robust, 200 meters water resistant, in-house automatic movement. Um, I'm not sure about the price. They do uh, change from time to time. I bought it for about uh, $60, I think. And then um, I bought this, uh, this bezel because I think the uh, original bezel uh, is, I don't think it is very appealing both in the design and in the functionality. So I think that bezel is a very nice upgrade. And then also the, the strap. So all in all, I would say for about 100 to 120 dollars American, you can get yourself a very nice, authentic, original dive watch that is very robust that allows hand wind, 
has a power reserve of about 40 hours. It might not be the most uh, accurate of watches, but it is definitely a, a very nice piece. If you liked my video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Please stay tuned for a final review uh, in which I will also show you how the bezel looks on this watch.